Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Shabir Safi and today we are going to explore Vault Secrets Operator and understand why it's the best way to fetch secrets from Vault for your Kubernetes application. So let's get to it. So before we talk about the Secrets Operator and how it works, let's understand what was used before Vault VSO and why we needed a different solution. So before VSO, a common method of injecting secrets from Vault into your Kubernetes application was the sidecar pattern. In this approach, the sidecar container would be responsible for authenticating and fetching secrets from Vault and writing them to a shared volume that the sidecar and the app container could access. So the benefit of this approach is that it allows the app container to use the secrets without having to include secret fetching logic in the application code itself. Although this pattern works fine, there are certain drawbacks. For instance, with addition of sidecars, you are also adding resource consumption for each pod. And in large-scale deployments, this can lead to more infrastructure cost and resource contention. Also, there is this additional operational complexity where you have to manage these additional containers and their configuration along with your application. And personally, the biggest drawback of this approach is each sidecar container is independently responsible for fetching and updating the secrets. So this can lead to inconsistencies where different pods might have different versions of the same secret. So now let's talk about VSO. So we have the Vault server and our applications. And instead of sidecars, we have a centralized secrets operator, which sits between your application and the Vault server. And on behalf of each application, VSO authenticates with the Vault server, fetches the secrets, and syncs those secrets to native Kubernetes secret resources. And your application pods just consume these native Kubernetes secrets. So the benefit we get from this pattern is you are no longer adding a sidecar per pod, which reduces the resource consumption for your cluster. And also there is no need to manage individual sidecar containers or handle the intricacies for their communication with Vault. And most importantly, it centralizes the management of secrets. So when a secret is updated in Vault, VSO can automatically propagate these changes to the relevant pods. And it ensures that all applications have the same version of the secret. So now let's see this thing in action. First, we are going to set up our local Kubernetes cluster using Kind. You can find the GitHub repo links in the description box below. But if you already have a running Kubernetes cluster, you can skip this step. Okay, once our cluster is set up and ready, we are going to deploy the Vault server and configure a few things. First, we are going to add the Vault Helm repository. I already have it on my system. So next, we are going to install Vault using Helm chart. And we are going to start the server in dev mode so that we don't have to manually initialize and unseal Vault. After deploying the server, Let's open up a new tab and open canines. And if we look at the vault namespace, we can see that our vault server is ready and unsealed. So let's exec into the pod. And the first thing we are going to enable is the kvv2 secrets engine at default path. And then we are going to add a secret for our fake application that we'll try to access through VSO. And lastly, we are going to create a policy that will grant access to read this particular secret. And we are going to call this uh, policy my secret. So now we are done with configuring our secret and its access. Next, we are going to enable the Kubernetes auth backend so our VSO can authenticate with Vault using Kubernetes service accounts. And along with that, we're going to configure this auth engine to talk to Kubernetes API server and authenticate the service account. And this is the last step of our entire vault setup. 
we're going to create a role for our application. And this role defines what is the service account name we are going to use to authenticate, which namespace that service account belongs to, and what policies we want to attach to this role. So you can see here we have a my secret policy that we created in the previous step that grants the read access to the secret. The audience parameter here is actually interesting and it is a actually a JWT token concept which ensures that only the intended service can accept this token. Uh, so for example, if the audience for your JWT token is vault, but that token is sent to some other service by mistake, that service will reject that JWT token. Okay, so now we are done with our vault server configurations. And now we are going to talk about VSO and how to make it work. So we'll deploy VSO with Helm as well. So I have a values.yml file for the VSO. The only thing noteworthy here is the address of the vault server where we are using HTTP instead of HTTPS. And that's because we have deployed our vault server in dev mode in which TLS is disabled. So let's go ahead and deploy the vault VSO char into its own namespace. And don't forget to provide the values.yml file as well. And once it's deployed, we can check in canines if the VSO pod is ready, and then we can move on to our next step. Okay, so to fetch the secrets using VSO, we are going to deploy a couple of custom resource definitions. The first one we are looking at here is the vault auth, which defines how the VSO is going to authenticate with vault on behalf of our application. So first, we are specifying which authentication method to use. In our case, we are using Kubernetes authentication method, but it could be any other auth method as well, like um, app role or AWS, for example. Under the Kubernetes section, we are providing the configuration options needed for authenticating to vault. And if you notice, the role name, service account, and the audience needs to match with what we just created inside vault. So this CRD will take care of authentication side of things for our application. Now let's look at the other custom resource we are creating, which is Vault sec uh, Static Secret. So we created a secret in KV Secrets Engine, which is considered a static secret. So we are going to provide the path to our static secret. And the refresh after field means that VSO will check for updates to this secret in Vault every 10 seconds. And if there's any change, it'll update the Kubernetes secrets. The rollout restart targets is really useful because it tells Kubernetes which applications or deployments or pods needs to be restarted when this secret changes. And remember that when you mount secrets or config map into deployments, you need to restart them in order to get the latest changes. So this ensures that our app always has the latest version of the secret. Finally, the destination specifies how we want our secret to appear in Kubernetes. Create true means it'll create a new Kubernetes secret named my secret if it doesn't already exist. And this is the secret name our applications in Kubernetes will use to access the secret data. And then the last piece is our deployment manifest. Here I have a simple deployment resource with Nginx container, and it's reading the secrets from the Kubernetes secret object into environment variables. So let's go ahead and deploy all these manifest files. First, we're going to create a new namespace for our application. And then we'll create the vault auth and the vault static secret custom resources in the same namespace as our application. And lastly, we are going to deploy our application as well. So now let's go to canines again and check the fake app namespace. And here, if you look at the secrets, we already have this my secret resource created. And we did not explicitly create this resource. This is created by VSO. So if you hit X on the keyboard, 
you can see the decoded data inside the secret and it has the username and password in there. So it looks like our VSO is doing its job. So now I'm going to open Vault Server in split screen. And on the left side, we have our application deployment. And on the right side, we have the Vault Server. I'm going to exec into the Vault Server and I'll update the secret and change the username and password to something else. But keep paying attention to the deployment object. Once I updated the secret, you can see my deployment was restarted. And that's because of the rollout restart targets config field. So now let's shell into the application pod as well. And let's print out all the environment variables. And here you can see that the secret password and the secret username are already updated with the latest values. So if you had more than one instance of your application, or if multiple applications were using this same secret, VSO will update all those deployment objects. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. And if you are using Vault or planning to use Vault in your organization for Kubernetes workload, in my opinion, this is the best way to do it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And I hope you found this video useful. So leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.